The second presentation in our mood setting videos where we're trying to set the mood for you to learn about PLCs specifically addresses input devices. In our previous video we discussed what does a PLC do. Well the very first thing an operator does is looks or feels or does something to input information into their brain. So in this presentation we're going to explore input devices. Mechanical sensors. Here's three different types of mechanical sensors. Limit switches, temperature switches, and pressure switches. In all three of these cases they use mechanical switches, dry contacts. And of course the limit switch trips when you hit a limit, physical movement. The temperature switches, see those bulbs, they are attached to a capillary that goes up to the box and it's full of a fluid and as temperature increases and decreases it expands and contracts and operates a switch. Pressure switches operate the exact same way except you plumb in a tube going to where Ever the gas or fluid is that you want to switch the pressure on at a set point. Now here's a typical limit switch that rotates on a shaft. If you take a look at the specs on this, it has a differential travel of a maximum of 10 degrees. That's mechanical switch hysteresis. When you rotate this shaft, and this is true of all mechanical switches that use a spring, there's a point where it trips. As you move the position, it trips. If you back off a little, it doesn't untrip. It doesn't reset. You have to back off until you overcome the hysteresis, and then it resets. That's 10 degrees or less on this particular limit switch. And here's a perfect example of a limit switch. You could go out and play with your garage door, and you would see there's a little hysteresis in there. Here's another limit switch application, a carriage on an assembly line, and the carriage rolls over a plunger with a roller on it, depresses it, and says it's there. Electronic sensors are probably the most interesting and the most flexible and have the most latitude for application, with photoelectric being the one that everybody's familiar with photo eyes. Then there's proximity switches. All of these electronic sensors are non-contact. Proximity switch senses an object in front of that plastic face. And you notice the two blue ones on the bottom, one of them is shielded and the other is unshielded. The unshielded with the longer plastic housing gives you more of a sensing distance. These things come in magnetic, inductive, or capacitive. And then we have ultrasonic sensors. They work like your fish finder or a sonar. They send out a burst of sound that you can't hear, and then they measure the time it takes to come back, and that's the distance. All of these have a varying value inside of them, but what they give you is a digital on-off, it's there, it's not there, binary operation. We mentioned the mechanical hysteresis. All these electronic switches or sensors have built-in hysteresis. So the operation distance as the object moves to the right towards the sensor, the operation distance is where it tripped. If you back off a little bit, it doesn't untrip. You have to back all the way to the resumption distance to reset that sensor. Same thing with a photo eye. You have an operation distance and a hysteresis, and you have to exceed that hysteresis to change the state back. Now, how do you change the operation distance? You do that with that little sensitivity adjustment. This particular illustration also has a light, dark setting, or normally open normally closed so you can pick whether you want it to open a contact or close it when it trips. All of these electronic sensors for the most part have an 8-bit analog circuit inside and then where you set the trip point and the hysteresis determines the reset. So as you adjust that sensitivity it moves this little hysteresis between reset and trip up and down between 0 and 255. With DeviceNet you can actually access the actual value between 0 and in 255. Here's a pressure switch. Notice the blue line up there. It starts at zero. It goes up. When it passes, it increases above RP. It doesn't trip the switch. And then it goes back down below RP and then it goes up again. This time it goes over the set point, trips the switch, switching state, and then it drops back down into that zone between RP and SP and nothing changes in the output of that sensor until it drops below the RP. And then notice it goes back up into the center again. Nothing happens until it actually trips the SP. So 
this is hysteresis. It's built into the electronics. This sensor actually has an analog circuit, but you're using it as an SPRP or a digital binary use. Photo eyes are used in one of three modes, diffuse, retroreflective, or transmitted beam. Diffuse and retroreflective have the transmitter and the receiver in one housing. The diffuse sees light bouncing off objects. The retroreflective sees it coming back from a mirror or a reflector. And the reflector can be polarized so the photo eye knows the difference between light that it came from it to the reflector and back and extraneous light in the room. Transmitted beam, that's the most obvious. Something moves between the transmitter and receiver and trips. You can pause and read the rest of this if you like. Now here a sensor with a reflector is sensing empty bottles on a line. Most of these sensors have two LEDs. One to show that there's power on it and the other to show whether it's tripped or not. That helps you when you're adjusting the sensitivity. Here's a diffuse photo eye looking at the edge of a roll of either paper or plastic. When the roll gets too low, it no longer sees it and says you need to replace it. Here's a proximity switch sensing the pallet that a uh, engine block is moving on. And here's a capacitive sensor sensing the product inside of that clear tube. I've actually done one of these with almond slivers coming down a chute into a bag of Almond Delight breakfast cereal. That was to guarantee that there were almonds in your breakfast cereal. And here's Here's one that's, this is ultrasonic, and it's looking at the distance to the web. So the web on a, on a plastic wrapping line has to have some slack in it. And if the slack's too little, then the ultrasonic sensor says, hey, it's too close. Or if it's too far away, then it's going to get tangled up. Ultrasonic. Here's another ultrasonic that's doing a water level sense. Now, remember, these are analog internally, but what comes out of them is an on and off. It's there, it's not there, based on the sensitivity adjustment. Okay, now I hope that puts you more in the mood for learning about PLCs. Uh, so when I say input field devices, uh, you have a solid idea of what I'm speaking about, specifically categories and types. So join us in the next presentation on output devices.